What's happening, folks? So OpenAI made their image model available via API, and now we can build fun stuff with this image model. This is in addition to the Dolly models, those were previously available. Now GPT image one is available to send prompts, to make edits, and to generate variations. And now you can use GPT image within Langflow. We're gonna look at how you can take an image and generate variations of that by asking the image model to create an exact replica of the image. And this is something that became quite popular on Twitter and many other social media where lots of people tested it with images of celebrities and it goes from the original image to a completely different variation of the image. So in this video, we're gonna look at building a similar app where we have Langflow as the backend API and the front end is built using one of the Vibe coding tools. So with that, let's get started. The app is called Exactish because it takes your image and kind of generate an exactish image. And the way it works is we provide an image and based on the image, it's gonna call the OpenAI image model 10 times with the same prompt saying to generate the replica of the image. So for example, if I were to drop this image of Tom Cruise and I am gonna hit start iteration, What's going to happen is it's going to start the process of iteration where it calls the Langflow backend with a prompt. It sends the prompt together with the image to OpenAI and then it gets a response back from OpenAI. And that's the exact response we're seeing here where we see a slight variation in the previous image. So if we look closely, there is a slight change. Now, as soon as we get all of the 10 images, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of change that happens over time. So while the images are generated, we can look at the flow. So the flow is quite simple. If you notice, we have a chat input. This is what takes a prompt. And then we have the image file that comes in and this is a custom component so if we were to look at the component it allows for us to upload an image file and along with that it takes a few different advanced options here and the code for this is generated using Claude so you can easily generate a custom component by asking any of the coding models and in this case the base of the component was the file component so I took the file component gave it to Claude saying that instead of file I wanted to accept images and with that it generated this code and with that now we can upload images now, along with the prompt and the image, we send that over to our OpenAI component. And you'll notice that this is a modified version of the OpenAI component. So what I did is I took the original code from the OpenAI component. Same thing, ask Claude to add one additional thing, which is to modify it to use images and send images to the OpenAI API. And that's what it did. It modified the code for us and now we can send images. So that's exactly what you notice here. It asks for an input for image file in addition to the usual prompt. Now, once we send the image and the prompt, we get a response back and I ask for it to send a base 64 response. And with that, we are gonna send that back to our front end. And that's where we are gonna be saving the base 64 image in our application. Now, once you have your flow ready, you are gonna take the API. So you can see under the publish section, we have the API access and we covered this in the previous videos where you can provide this to a tool like Postman or Insomnia, and you can make a test call and get the response back. And that response is going to help with your vibe coding tools like Lovable or Bolt, where you can give an example and let them know how the response looks like. And one additional thing that you might want to look into is the upload option. So in Langflow, the way upload file works is that you are first going to upload it to your flow and it's quite well documented in the docs where you can look at the curl command as well as the result of how the upload of file works and once you upload you are going to get a path 
to where the file is uploaded. So regardless if you're running Langflow locally or on a server, you'll get a path where you can send this path to the flow. And with that, you can run the flow with an image or file or anything that is supported by the API. So it's a two-step process, but the good thing is you can pretty much copy these docs and then provide that to your Vibe coding tool. And it's gonna follow the steps to upload a file and run the flow. So pretty much taking the initial API access from Langflow and some of these docs, we can provide that to our Vibe coding tool. And with that, we can ask for a nice UI and and the result is the app here. So you notice that it generated 10 of these images and you can go through all of these images and you notice that it is a slight variation of the image before. But then kind of comparing the first and the last image, it is quite different. And if we want, we can download the GIF here. And now looking at the GIF, you can understand the complete change going from the first image to the last image. And this is one of the many example apps that we can build using the image API that that is now available from Google with their Gemini models and from OpenAI with their GPT image model and connecting Langflow. Now you can provide your agents and workflows access to these image models.